Hello and welcome to this edition of the Airport News Show, a half hour program about the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. I'm Debbie Jones, Community Relations Administrator. On today's program, we're going right to the top. It's my pleasure to introduce my very special guest today, Ms. Deborah Pasturum, who is the chairman of the JAA Board of Directors. Welcome, Deborah. Thank Hi, you Debbie. for being here. And Mr. Steve Grossman, who's the JAA Executive Director and CEO. Welcome, Steve. Thanks, Deb. Well, I really want to talk about the role, not only of the authority, but of the board and how that relationship is and the JAA's role in the community. And so, Deborah, uh, well, first I want to get some information about the two of you. Deborah, can you give us a little background information about yourself and how long have you been on the board of directors? Well, I've been a part of the Jacksonville Aviation Authority for almost three years now, and it's been quite an interesting experience. Um, but my background is I have spent um, probably over 20 years in the HR and staffing industry, so very involved in many cities and different communities, and uh, just recently left that and went into some private consulting so that I could have more free time to give to my Jacksonville Aviation Authority, obviously. But it's been an exciting transition, so I've been there for about three years. Okay, and Steve, what about you? What, tell us a little bit about your background and how long have you been associated with the authority? Well, I've been in the aviation industry for about 35 years now. Most of it at airports, um, San Jose Airport in California, Oakland Airport for 17 years, and then last September, September 14th exactly, uh, I started here at the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. And going back to the board of directors, a lot of people may not know how that really works. So it's an appointed position. Mm -hmm. So can you explain a little bit about how many positions are on the board, how many are gov mm -hmm. gubernatorial appointments and mayoral appointments, and maybe a little bit about the process of becoming a part of the board. Okay. Um, the board members for Jacksonville Aviation Authority are appointed. It's a mixture of individuals that are appointed from the mayor as well as the governor. So it's a nice mix of individuals from all different backgrounds. The appointment process is you go, you fill out an application and you do lots of interviews and lots of questions and they do a lot of due diligence on that background because they really like to have a diverse mixture of members so that you bring different perspectives from all over um, to the authority. So th that's kind of the direction. There are seven members to the board, so it's a nice mixture you know, of all different people from all different backgrounds. Now, are you a mayoral appointment or a gubernatorial appointment? I'm a gubernatorial appointment, so I've been on here for three years now. And you're the newest chairman of the board of directors. When did that office start? Um, my term is October, so October. I took over in October, so we've got a few months under mm -hmm. our belt there as um, chair. And as the board of directors for the authority, what is the board's role as it relates to the authority? Well, the uh, board of directors for the Aviation Authority is a governing board, so we set the direction and the vision along with the CEO. And then we provide oversight, but we provide oversight at the 50,000 feet level. We are not involved in the day-to-day -day activities of the authority. And I assume you work very closely with the executive director. Mm -hmm. and isn't one of the responsibilities of the board to find a new executive director, which is something you had to do this we summer? We did. We did. We just recently um, had Steve join us after a mm -hmm. long arduous yep. interviewing <laughs> process that yeah. we put him through. Um, but we did. We brought in um, a new individual. The previous um, position had been for the same person for almost 15 years. So right. this was a new thing for the board to go through. And um, we, were, we were excited. It was a great mm -hmm. opportunity. Had uh, lots of conversations with talented people. But the authority was really looking for someone, obviously, with industry experience. Mm -hmm. But we also wanted someone who could truly understand and appreciate the JAA system mm -hmm. with how we have JIA, with Herlong, with Cecil and Craig and you know that's a that's a special type of mixture it's not just one airport so we wanted someone who could appreciate and understand that but we also wanted someone on the personality side that could come in and really build rapport mm -hmm. and we wanted someone that would build rapport with the city because that makes it beneficial for our entire community. And Steve, what was it about the Jacksonville Aviation Authority that appealed to you and made you want to be a part of the organization? Sure. For 
many years I had worked either at a city-run airport or a multimodal port uh, such as Oakland, which had a, a seaport and an airport. What I was really looking for first and foremost was an airport-only authority. Uh, that gives me the opportunity to implement a lot of the philosophies and with the board's concurrence policies that I've developed over my many years uh, in the business. Then as I got to know um, the authority a bit more during the interview process, the idea of having four very different airports, all of which fit into a very unique system, um, was very interesting to me. And the challenge of developing property such as we have at Cecil Field uh, represented uh, a bit of a new challenge, but, but one that, that I, I really look forward to. I now, thought it was oh, the I'm fabulous sorry. board that you wanted to join. Oh. The fabulous board was uh, a <laughs> nice a throw in there. <laughs> okay. um, but it was, it was interesting because the, bo the board, to say it was a rigorous interview process would be maybe an understatement. Hmm. Um, because I remember the, the final interview, the board asked me to give a 20-minute presentation on my vision for the authority. And you can imagine that's a bit challenging when you have about 5% of the information mm -hmm. about the organization in the city, et cetera. Um, but uh, I decided to just phrase it such that it was what I thought every airport should be, which in this case uh, is an economic asset to the community, a major economic engine. And, and so that's what I talked about. And my vision you know, for the next five plus years is really to maximize the ability of the authority to contribute to the people of Jacksonville. And it's mostly through economic development, jobs, our purchasing, things like that. Well, going back to the fact that we are a four airport system, from both of your perspectives, how is that beneficial, not only to the community of Jacksonville, but to the region? Why? Why is that such a wonderful asset for this area? Well, I'll give a very brief um, answer. I think each of those airports bring something to those individual communities. They are four very different airports. Um, but it makes us more diverse. We're not planning for just one um, airport. We don't plan about you know just exactly what we're going to be doing for JIA only. It makes us look at what works well for the entire city and how that can benefit the citizens of the entire city. So I think that's what makes it interesting is mm -hmm. that you bring a diverse background. Now specifics that would be Steve's you know answer of why mm -hmm. they're specifically Sh more important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and actually it does. It, it builds on that. Having four airports makes JIA a lot safer airport because we can take a lot of the smaller aircraft and, and they'll go to either Craig or Herlong, taking them out from the heavy commercial aircraft that we have at, at JIA. So from a safety standpoint, makes all of the airports safer because we can do that. Because we have Cecil Field, gives us the opportunity to develop property, develop it with industries that provide lots of jobs. And for the city, that's the most important thing because the authority doesn't make its money off of jobs. You know, we make money off of land rent at places like Cecil, but the community, the city of Jacksonville, makes its money from people who work here because those people buy things, they pay sales taxes, they buy homes, um, and other things that generate money for the city. So it it puts us in a in a multitude of roles. It's not just providing aviation services. It's providing that economic role that many airports don't have the resources to do. You know, and most cities have one airport, and it's usually a fairly land-constrained airport, so they're not in the business of attracting industries. Here, we have a wonderful opportunity. We're just at the beginning of it to maximize these resources for the benefit of the citizens of Jacksonville. Now from a board perspective, because you said you are the governing body of the authority, as you look out and see these types of opportunities, what, what do you see or what, as far as uh, goals for the governing side of the authority that could be translated into what Steve does, looking out into that future and the diversification? What kind of, 
goals do you have for the authority in that regard? Well, goals for the authority, my immediate goal for the authority, the entire board has um, the goal for the authority is a smooth transition of our new CEO mm -hmm. into the JAA system as well as into the community overall. Um, this is a perfect opportunity to build rapport and to build bridges with the individuals in the city so that we truly do get the benefits of strong economic growth. Uh, that's our immediate goal. Uh, second to that, there's a lot of opportunity. So I think as a board member, it's important that we really weigh the benefits of all of these opportunities and balance that out. You know, there's okay. great opportunities in, you know, Herlong and Craig and Cecil and JIA, and you have to manage your resources and you have to look long term. There's really nothing we do that is immediate. Everything we do has a long range impact, and I think it's important at a board level that you really get to that 50,000 foot level and look out and say, okay, how is this going to be effective in the next two, three years, but also how is it effective in the next 15 years, and how does that impact the community that we're in? And translating the board's goals into what you do, H how are you implementing or what is your plan to implement some well, of their goals for it's you? It's very important to me to build those relationships with all of the entities in Jacksonville. So in my first five months, I've been on a campaign of I say no to nobody. I, I will go anywhere, anytime to talk about the authority to listen to what's going on in the community, any concerns they might have with the authority. Uh, I'm pleased at how well I have been received by the community and how supportive this community is. Uh, because first and foremost, the JAA is a business. We happen to be a government-run business, but it's a business. And so what I look for is, one, I have to assure myself that we are running a strong business. And I'm very pleased, because here we are, Let's hope at the tail end of the recession, and, and the authority has a very strong financial position. So we have weathered the storm of one of the worst recessions in the history of this country uh, in fairly good, good shape. And then it's a matter of, okay, uh, with all the support we get from the various entities within the city, whether it's the chamber or, or various other groups, how do we use those resources to help us accomplish these economic development goals? Now, um, something else uh, you mentioned about the board as well as policy making. What have been some of the challenges that you've had as a board that kind of, you know, needed to be addressed or uh, that would fit into your long-range goals? I know you, you talked about a diverse group mm -hmm. of people. What is it like as chairman to bring those diverse backgrounds together to to plot a path for the authority. And have there been some specific challenges in, in doing that type of thing? Well, it would be nice if I said there were no challenges <laughs> and it was just a breeze. But now, um, the good thing about it is everybody that's working with Jacksonville Aviation Authority, we all have different opinions. We all come from a very different place. But the bottom line, our goal is to be there for the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. So when you put you know, all of the uh, personal um, feelings aside, you really look at it, what is the mission of the Aviation Authority, how does it impact our city and community overall, and does it make the right, does this make sense? Mm -hmm. That makes the decision a lot easier. Now, we have a lot of dialogue and there's a lot of conversation, which is healthy. Um, you know, if you sit around and you know, there's nobody um, challenging you or giving, giving a different opinion, well, there's no reason for you to all be sitting at that table. So it does make it interesting, but at the end of the day, you realize whatever decision we come up with is usually the right one because we've vetted it. We've had a lot of different perspectives and it makes the right decision. And you know, the challenges we have is this is long range and you have to look at land use and planning because once you start going down a path, you don't really change your mind and then go right. back in the other direction. There's no more land there. So those are probably the biggest challenges that we make sure we spend a lot of time. And I know one of the big opportunities is Cecil Field. Mm -hmm. So Steve, uh, what are some of the um, strategies or plans or goals related specifically to Cecil Field because it is such a powerful opportunity mm -hmm. not only for the authority but for the entire region. Well I think the first thing for the viewers to understand 